Good afternoon class. Today we will start watercoloring our Rosso inspired jungles or rainforests, whatever you created. Um, so I just wanted to remind you a few watercolor techniques before we get started. Of course, before I start painting, I need to wake up my watercolor paints. And all that means is I'm just taking a little bit of water and dropping it into each color. Good morning, Brown. How do you do, Purple? My name is Violet. Oh, good morning, Violet. Good morning, Blue. Good morning, Miss Smith. Good morning, Green. Hey, what's up? Good morning, Yellow. Good morning, Orange. Good morning, Red. And good morning, Black. Again, if a color is starting to get low, add a little extra water to it. We use these watercolors until they turn white. Okay, so I did some painting on this earlier, which means it is all dry. Okay, so um, one method I could do now is what's called dry onto dry. Um, so I'm going to show that one first. So here I have my sun painted behind my clouds. And now that the sun is dry and the orange won't bleed into the green, that would be a great time for me to paint my trees. Um, you want to give them a little bit of time to dry before steps or between steps. Because um, otherwise your colors will run into each other and you'll get kind of a blurry wet into wet kind of look. Now in these trees where I've kind of got them separated by my pencil lines, maybe that's a good place for some wet into wet. So I use some green, I'm gonna wash that off and switch to yellow. And then maybe here, this tree is a little bit of a yellow green. So there is a wet into wet example. Maybe I start with that yellowish green here. You can maybe start to see that this color is pulling its way over here just a little bit. Um, wash my brush, maybe now some green in there, some of that more wet into wet. Again, and I can just paint with the water and let the color, ooh, there it goes, it's kind of rushing over and filling in some of those spaces. Maybe I want to add a little bit more yellow in here and kind of just let those blend together and create a really cool look. I can just leave it like that. I can sort of blend them in as I want. So that's wet into wet, okay? That would work great for things in the background, maybe even some of this like middle ground space that you need to fill. If you have a water feature, like a waterfall or something like that, some of this wet into wet will really kind of look great for that sort of process. Now, where dry into dry might be a good process. Here, that's what I did with my tiger. Um, so I actually painted him all orange and then totally let it dry about five to 10 minutes. Um, and then I went back and painted it black. So I'm gonna show you that with the sloth. So my sloth is going to have um, a touch of brown and black. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna mix some of my own color up here. I'm gonna make kind of a blackish brown. Now, I liked that color that was already there. If I didn't, I'd want to clean that out first. So I've got my blackish brown, and I'm going to paint my sloth. Now, he's in the foreground, so I'm not going to just paint it a solid color. I'm going to maybe add a little detail of the fur that you might see. I saw once that the sloths uh, kind of like pick up like an algae or moss in their um, fur. And so what I'm gonna do after this brown dries is add a little bit of green. Okay, and maybe I'll paint his face all brown. I can add those details later. Now, you can already start to see that there's a lot of detail on him. If I go in with that other color right now, it's gonna like mess up all those nice lines that I made. So I'm gonna let that dry. Um, and the way I got those nice lines was by going so soft on there, like tickling on my hand, was how I did that here. If I push it, it looks like that, and that's going to give me a really big line, okay? Um, so while he's drying, maybe I want to do something in the foreground. Um, I have two examples here. This one is a wet into wet shaded grass, and this is dry onto dry. So I've already painted that black and let it dry. Maybe I grab some green and paint right on top. So I'm still going to be able to see that uh, shade of black underneath there, um, and that will give it one distinct look, right? Um, or what I can do is wash my brush, grab some black, and um, paint the black first. So paint those black lines. Okay. 
And then the trick here is when you're doing wet into wet, not to let it dry. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some green and mix it right in. So I'm still gonna get a little bit of a shade, um, but it's gonna look a bit, a bit more like that, a little bit more blurry. So it kind of depends on the look you're going for, if you want it to look more blurry or more defined. I think for the foreground, this defined look works a little bit better. That blurred look, again, might be better for the background. Um, I'm gonna check my guy, he looks pretty dry. So I'm gonna make my own kind of tealish color here. So teal is gonna be a little bit of blue and a little bit of green mixed together. And that's the color I'm gonna use for his moss. So those tertiary colors are gonna be a great option um, as well as tints and shades. And so I'm gonna just mix in some of this green right on top of that little guy. He's almost starting to blend in with that tree. So I still see all those defined lines of his fur and then the defined lines of that green moss. And I might even go over that with some black to kind of finish it off. Um, especially if I want to make it look like there's some weight to the sloth, I could add a little bit of black or a shade like underneath him on these spots where there would be like a shadow. And maybe his face is a little bit darker. Now let's say I did something that I really regret doing. I can just touch it very carefully with a paper towel and pull up some of that color. Okay, so you're gonna color your entire picture. I don't wanna see any white space left when we're finished with these, okay? So we're really creating a um, rainforest inspired by Rosso. So see how you can create, how creative you can be. What are you gonna do with your sky, your weather, your forest, your group? flowers, your animals, what can you do to make yours unique? All right, have fun guys, thanks.